Okay, guys, in this video lesson, we're going to talk about rounding calculated values that come from measurements, okay? So if we recall our measurements, whenever we measure, we always want to make sure that we measure to the precision of our instrument plus that estimate. Now, that estimate helps reduce our error, but it doesn't eliminate it. So because of that, there's always some error in our math, or our measurements, I should, I should say, that we always have to make sure that we account for that and don't record calculated numbers more precisely than the original measurements, okay? So if you think about it, if you're measuring to two or three layers of precision, then your answers should also match those two or three layers of precision. So here's our basic rules. Make sure you record your answer to the same precision as the original measurements. Okay? So here's what we do. For each measured number in a calculation, determine how many measured numbers, we call them significant figures, are present. Okay? So we're basically going to look at and we're going to count them. Okay? That tells you the levels of precision that we have. So if we go down here. If we measure this number, we have a 6, a 5, and a 5. So that gives us three layers of precision, or basically three measured values inside of here. Okay? Um, if we have a 0.9943, again, it's measured because we see a label on it. That gives us 4. Now, this 0 out here, we don't want to count that because um, just mathematically speaking, we're supposed to put a 0 in front of a decimal. So it's just kind of a placeholder here. Over here, we have 52, so it's only 2. Okay? Once you know that and can count your, your significant figures or count your measured values, then all you really need to do is round your answer to the same number of measured numbers, called those sig figs, as the least one. Okay, So you just go to them, count them, and then measure as, as the least. Now, if we do a problem like this, we want to solve for density. We're going to use density kind of a lot as our examples in this unit because it's a really easy calculation that we should all know what to do. So we take our mass divided by our volume. And if we take a look, we notice that the mass measurement has one, two layers of precision to it, or two measured values. The volume has one, two, three layers of precision, or three measured values in it. So we have a two and a three. Our dumb calculator gives us this answer. Okay, so if we punch into our calculator, it's going to do this. Now it's our job to figure out, well, where do we round this number off? Okay, and we're not truncating it. We're not just cutting it off. We're actually going to round it. So if this number was a 5, we would round up. If it was a 4, as we see now, we're going to round down. So because this is a 2 and this is a 3, we, round this, we want to round this number down to only two places. Okay, so once again, the 0 is our placeholder here. So we have a 4 and a 2. So we have one layer of precision, two layers of precision to match this 2. This is a 4, so we round down. So our answer would be 0 0.42, and of course our label, grams per million. Okay, it's really that simple. Okay, um, but you do need to practice it a little bit to make sure you're comfortable with it because you run across some different scenarios that you might have some questions about. All right, now there's some additional considerations that we want to make sure that we account for because not all the math is as simple as the problem I just gave you. Okay, so let's talk about adding and subtracting. If you are adding and subtracting, we don't necessarily follow the exact same rules. Okay, typically speaking, when you add and subtract, you should be using measured values that come from the same measured tool. Okay, so if I'm using a graduated cylinder and I'm, you know, adding up volume or subtracting away volume, I should use the same graduated cylinder over and over and over again. That's the best way to do it. As a result, um, we should have the same precision at all times. Now, if you happen to have a value that is not the same precision, we need to deal with that. Okay, so let's go through a couple of bullet points here. So. For, adding, for simple adding and subtracting, you're just adding up numbers, just subtracting away numbers. All you do is round your answer to the same decimal place as the measurements used in the addition or subtraction. Okay? So basically, if everything is going to the tenths place, you round to the tenths place. If everything is going to the hundredths place, you round to the hundredths place. Okay? So there really isn't any rounding here at all. Now, if you have different precision, round to the lesser of the two. Okay? So here's our two examples. So in our first example, we have 17.7 minus 4.3. Okay? So we're not going to count how many layers of precision we have here. We're going to look just at the decimal. So because we're doing adding and subtracting, we say, oh, this is just adding and subtracting. I went to the tenths place. I went to the tenths place. My answer should be the tenths place. Okay, so you notice there's no rounding here at all. It's just whatever your answer is is your final answer. Okay, however, if you happen to have a number like this where the one measurement ends in the ones place and the other one ends in the tenths place and then you subtract them, you have to round your answer to the least precise of the two. So because this number ended in the ones column and this number ended in the tenths column, 
We get 100.8, but we have to round our number back, make it less precise, really, back to 101 meters. Okay, and that again goes back to our idea that this five is probably the estimate. So if we have about 125 and we subtract 24.2, we get about 101 meters back from that. Okay, so this is one that sometimes students don't like because they feel like you're losing precision, and you're absolutely right. You are losing precision off this number, but because this number only measured out to the ones column, we can't report it any more precise than our final answer, which is to the ones column. Okay. And then last consideration we want to talk about is that when you're doing these rounding and all this kind of stuff, only use measured values to determine precision, okay? So what I mean by that is if you're using a number in the math that has not been measured, okay, uh, that should not control precision whatsoever. It should not limit your precision, I should say, okay? So things like standard numbers, okay, so like a standard value. Uh, constants, okay, so if you have a constant, like everything gets multiplied by 2, or everything gets divided by 4, okay, or, or there's a 1 half in your equation, you don't do with those, okay? Anything that you count, okay, so if there's 10 people in the room and you want to use a multiplier by 10 because there's 10 people, you wouldn't factor in that 10 because 10 is counted in terms of a value there. Uh, conversion factors, so if you're converting from like grams to milligrams or uh, liters to milliliters, we don't count those numbers either because they're exact equalities. They're not measured, okay? Um, and then anything else that's not measured, okay? Uh, for example, things that are not measured is small amounts of money, okay? So, for example, if you're measuring out, you know, $5.82, we don't really measure that. We count out money, okay? Um, or if we're measuring out, you know, change from a purchase we make, there is no measurement there. You're counting out dollars and cents. So money at most times is not measured also. Okay. Now, the only exception to that is if you're dealing with, you know, millions upon millions of dollars that they're not actually counting individual bills, then you can treat it as measured, but that's not something that's in the scope of this class. Okay. So what I want to do is I like to do um, some problems here. So we're going to find the surface area if the length is 47 centimeters and the width is 53.1 centimeters, okay? So surface area is length times width. So I have 47 centimeters times 53.1 centimeters. Multiply those two together, and if we push that into our calculator, 47 times 53.1, I get 2,495.7. So 2,495.7 centimeters, okay? Now we need to round this properly. So our first number has one, two layers of precision, or two sig figs. Our second number has one, two, three layers of precision to it, or three measured values in it. Okay? So I have two to three, so the smaller number is two. I need to round this to two. Okay? So the way we do that is we read from left to right, work our way from left to right. You find your first non-zero. Okay? So if there are zeros out front, we'd ignore them. Okay? So here's our first non-zero. It's a two. I can go to two layers, so here's one layer, two layers of precision, so I had to round it off at the hundreds place. So this answer would be rounded to 2,500 centimeters. Because this is a nine, then I'm gonna round the four up to a five, okay? These zeros become placeholders to hold my number, but they are not part of my precision at this point, okay? So we see that on this one. Now, one thing you can do, if you don't like these zeros as placeholders, or if that kind of, bugs you or confuses you, you always can rewrite your answers in scientific notation. And when you do that, you notice how the zeros drop away. So your placeholder zeros will go away if you write it in scientific notation. So either is acceptable here, okay? Let's go down to the next one. Find the density of a gas that has a mass of 1.23 grams and a volume of 312.8 milliliters, okay? So here we're doing density. And we have a mass, so it's density is mass over volume. So we have a mass of 1.23 grams, and we have a volume of 312.8 milliliters, okay? So we punch that in, 1.23 divided by 312.8 milliliters, and we get a really small number, okay? So that would equal... 0 0.0039322251, and it's grams per milliliter, okay? 
outlandish number. Dumb calculator knows nothing, okay? So what we want to do is round it off to the right precision. So again, we count one, two, three layers of precision, one, two, three, four layers of precision. Three is our smaller value. However, from left to right, I skip all my zeros. I start here. One, two, three. Because that three matches my three there. Okay? And I'm going to round off at this point here. So my answer would be 0 0.00393. Label that grams per milliliter. To my final answer there. Okay? So, again, we see this. We have our long, dumb calculator answer. And we rounded it off to... 0 0.00393 grams per milliliter. And again, if you want to, you can break this down and write it in scientific notation. So those extra zeros that were just placeholders are no longer part of your number. So 3.93 times 10 to the negative 3 grams per milliliter. Okay? So keep in mind that sometimes these zeros are not really part of the measurement. They're just placeholders. Okay? And don't worry about that. Just that they're placeholders, just um, round it as you need to and put the placeholders in as you need to. Okay? All right, guys, that ends this video lesson today. Um, there's additional practice to answer at the end of the lesson, and we'll also do some more practice in class. Thank you.